Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History After the Bell, where I get to talk about stuff and not worry about kids taking tests. How fun is that? I thought we would talk a little bit about the controversy surrounding the Confederate flag, try to give you a little bit of context. You know, wherever you stand on the issue, I think it's important that you have some historical information that's going to help guide your decisions, although I think most people have made up their minds. First, I would say that the Confederate flag isn't the Confederate flag. The Confederate flag is a symbol that was adopted from the Northern Virginian Army under Robert E. Lee, who flew that flag as a symbol of what the South stood for against Yankee aggression. The actual Confederate flag went through three different designs. The first one didn't even have that design, and then it began to be you know, incorporated kind of in the corner. But it really wasn't until after the Civil War that that symbol, the Confederate flag, became symbolic of that cause. Um, and now for whites, I think that their cause is heritage and a way of life and their cultural background. And, um, you know, tons of people died. So people's grandfathers, people's ancestors fought and died under that concept. So we can kind of understand why they might be kind of attached to that symbol because they see it as a reminder of, you know, how that affected their families. But certainly lots of other people have different viewpoints of that flag. Now, after the Civil War, the flag becomes the symbol of kind of that white South. African Americans aren't flying that flag. It's white people. And the KKK are using that flag predominantly to send a message that we are united in our opposition to civil rights. And then the Dixiecrats in 1956 use it as their campaign flag. Um, and of course the Dixiecrats are a segregationalist, you know, political group that splintered off the Democratic Party. Strom Thurmond ran for president in 1956 as a Dixiecrat, you know, fighting tooth and nail, hell and high water against civil rights. So we can kind of understand at this point why some African Americans might not be so thrilled with that flag. And then when civil rights kind of, you know, really hits the fan in the late 1950s and the early 1960s, that's when you see states like Mississippi, Alabama, and South Carolina start raising that flag over their state capitals. And certainly, again, I'll point out, I understand why there's tons of people that aren't offended by that flag because they're seeing it through the eyes of their own experience and the eyes of their, their personal history. But for tons of other people, African Americans, when they see that flag, whether you like it or not, they're reminded of Jim Crow, of lynching, of segregationalists, of you know um, these laws that kept them bounded for so long in the South. So here we are, 2015, and we're having this fight again. So my personal opinion, I don't think that government should be state government should be flying that flag for the simple reason that there's a large chunk of their citizens that they are deeply offending and they are citizens of that state. And I would say, you know, if you're doing that, it's probably not a good thing. I mean, if I had a black nation and we flew the flag of the trout and I had lynched and, you know, segregated and, you know, used terrorism against a, a small white population for a hundred years, and then finally that white group got some rights and now suddenly I'm putting that, you know, trout all over my car and I'm raising it up around my house. You know, I think that whether you're trying to send a message or not, it's sending a message to that group that sees it through their eyes. And you can call it people being too sensitive or PC, but that's the way that I feel. Now, individually, if people want to wear that flag, buy that flag, put that poster up on their wall, that's your right. That's freedom of speech. I don't think it should be banned. I think that people have a right to do whatever they want when you know it comes to those types of things as long as you're not physically hurting other people. Um, certainly you don't have a right to control their reaction. So if I wear a swastika and down the street and somebody wants to beat the crap out of me, you know that's their freedom to want to do that. <laughs> so you better be careful. Now corporations and you know uh, big companies that are not selling that or Amazon and all of those things, that's capitalism. Right? Um, if you want to create a company and you want to sell that flag, you have a right to do that. But if you own a company and you're worried about advertising or backlashing or whatever it is and you don't want to sell that flag, that's your right too. So when it comes down to it, guys, I think it's a personal choice. I think the government certainly shouldn't be supporting um, that endeavor. They should get their hands off that flag and uh, we'll see where the chips fall. But certainly, I believe that everybody's earnest in their opinions, except for the evil racists out there. And I don't think that everybody that's for the Confederate flag is a racist, not whatsoever. But I do think that they think, should think carefully about how other people interpret that flag. And sometimes being kind um, 
is a little better than being right. So tell me what you think below. I think I'm going to get some hate comments. Hashtag hate. Take them. I can take them. Bring them on. We'll see you guys next time that you press my buttons as we continue to do some after the bells and we're going to hit up some new lectures soon. I'm just so excited to do the teaching on the YouTubes. All right, guys, where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you next time.